This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Melissa Duffy is suffering from a mysterious ailment that is causing her body temperature to fluctuate wildly. Concerned for her well-being, Melissa's partner, Dan, rushes her to the hospital. There, infectious disease specialist, Dr. Matthew Sims, takes on her case. Melissa, she was pretty sick when they called me. Just looking at her, the first thing you could notice is that her skin and her eyes were yellow. Also known as jaundice, the yellowing of the skin and eyes occurs when the body fails to process broken down red blood cells. It can be caused by a variety of serious illnesses. It's a pretty significant finding, especially in a relatively young woman. Through my limited knowledge of jaundice, I'm thinking, OK, well, I mean, this was just the first stages of her liver and kidneys shutting down. I guess I was a little bit more worried. Dr. Sims continues to examine Melissa. When I got to the abdominal exam, I noticed a scar on her left side. When the doctor mentioned that, you know, it was the first thing that came out of my mouth, like, hey, she don't have a spleen. Though it's not a vital organ, the spleen removes damaged blood cells and foreign organisms. He mentioned that that was from the cancer and that she had her spleen removed several years ago. And that raised alarm bells in my head. Without the spleen, we were very worried that she had an infection in her blood. Dr. Sims runs a battery of blood tests. And while he waits for the results, he puts Melissa on broad spectrum antibiotics. After a few hours, Melissa's condition appears to stabilize. Nevertheless, doctors keep her overnight for observation. I was pretty relieved at the emergency room experience. I felt like she was in good hands. I went home that night feeling pretty good. But the next morning, Dan wakes up to something startling. I woke up at 7, and I just checked my phone. and saw that I had missed a phone call from the hospital at like 4.45. I was like, wow, how did I miss a call? I checked the message. It was a call saying, you should come to the hospital. It's emergency. And that was it. It was a short message. Like, oh my god. You know, because I didn't know she could be dying in the hospital. She could be already dead. And I got scared. Dan rushes to Melissa's side. She was hooked up to life support. I said, wow, I didn't realize she was this sick. When the blood test came back, it indicated her blood cells were breaking down. And when blood cells break down, you lose your ability to carry oxygen to your organs. And that, of course, is very bad. At this point, she was in multi-organ failure. And we were very concerned that she could be in immediate risk of death. He said, OK, 90% of her kidneys is shut down, her liver is shut down. I was like, geez. How could this be happening? Later that afternoon, blood cultures reveal the culprit. As soon as I saw these results, I realized that Melissa was in real trouble. Melissa had babesiosis. Babesiosis meant nothing to me. It's just like, wow, this ain't good. Wow. Babesiosis is a disease caused by the parasite Babesia microti. Inside Melissa's body, the Babesia parasites travel through her bloodstream and invade her red blood cells. There, they multiply and cause the cells to burst. As the parasites continue to flood her bloodstream, they deprive her body of oxygen, leading to her fluctuating body temperature, jaundice, and multi-organ failure. 
I was truly devastated. What makes the Babesia parasite so effective is their ability to avoid the body's defenses by multiplying inside the red blood cells. It's only when the red blood cells rupture and the parasites are released into the bloodstream that the immune system can detect them. Over time, infection with Babesia parasites can lead to severe anemia, organ failure, and death. To save Melissa's life, Dr. Sims must take extreme measures. Treatment for this infection is two antibiotics together, clindamycin and quinine. But severe cases such as this, when this much of the blood is infected, we take out the infected blood and replace it with donated blood. For three days, doctors replaced two thirds of Melissa's blood. I was a, quite a mess inside over it. Melissa was out of my hands at that point. You know, it was, uh, I don't know, man, okay. I don't okay. know. Okay. Then, one morning, Dan witnesses something encouraging. The nurse kind of rigidly shook Melissa just to get her attention and said, Melissa, if you can hear me, if you understand, wiggle your toe. And Melissa wiggled her toe. That was, that was a moment of joy. When I opened my eyes, Dan was sitting at the end of my bed, and all I could say was, what? What? <laughs> but I had a tube down my throat, so I couldn't really speak. I think we even clapped our hands and hugged, and we were going to make it through. Life was good. We're on the mend. A week and a half later, Melissa is allowed to go home. Babesia microti parasites are typically carried by deer ticks. Humans become hosts for the parasites when bitten by an infected tick. Babesia parasites are most common in the northeast of the United States. Melissa believes she contracted the infection a month earlier while she was working at the Holistic Retreat in upstate New York. I was checking people into the workshop spaces, and this tick landed on the clipboard, and I made a deal with the tick. I said, listen, buddy, I won't kill you. Just tell your friends to stay away from me. I don't want Lyme disease. But I wasn't specific enough. I didn't realize that ticks carried other diseases that I could possibly get. I was in nature all of the time. It could happen anywhere. Today, a year later, Melissa has completely recovered from her bout with babesiosis. I definitely appreciate life more. I feel really lucky that I've faced death and I'm still here. <laughs>